Why should one invest? Before we address that question, let's see what happens if you do not invest. Let us assume that you earn 50,000 per month right now and you spend 30,000 per month towards your expenses like your food, your transportation, your medicals, your cost of living basically. The balance of rupees 20,000 is your monthly savings or your surplus. For the sake of simplicity, let's exclude income tax in this discussion. To drive the point across, let's consider some assumptions. Assumption number one, your salary increases by 10% per year. Assumption number two, your cost of living increases by 8% per year because of a new expenditure that you keep having in a particular year. Assumption number three, you are 30 years old right now and you plan to retire by 50 years. That means you have 20 years left to work. Assumption number four, you don't intend to work after you retire. Assumption number five, your expenses are fixed and you do not foresee any new expenses. Going by these assumptions, this is how your cash retained will look like in 20 years. For the first year, you have a yearly income of 6 lakh rupees and you have a yearly expense of 3 lakh 60,000 rupees, which means you have a cash retained of 2 lakh 40,000 rupees. Now for the second year, you have a cash income of 6 lakh 60,000 rupees because of your bonus hike of 10% and you will have a cash outflow or a yearly expense of 3 lakh 38,000 rupees. But your cash retained is going to be 2 lakh 71,000 rupees. Now this goes on. For the third year, you'll have a cash retained of 3 lakh 6,000 rupees. For the fourth year, you'll have 3 lakh 45,000 rupees and this keeps going on. It keeps building up. So at the end of 20 years of your working life, you will have a total savings of around 1 crore 78 lakhs rupees. So after 20 years of hard work, you have accumulated 1.7 crore rupees. Since your expenses are fixed in this particular calculation, you have suppressed your aspirations for a better home, a better vehicle, etc. After you retire, assuming that your expenses still raise by 8% per year, 1.7 crores will help you sail through for approximately 10 years after your retirement life. The 11th year onwards, it will put you in a tight spot. So the next question is, is there a way to ensure that you have a larger sum at the end of these 20 years? Yes, start investing. Let's consider another scenario. Instead of keeping the cash idle, let's say you choose to invest this cash in an investment option that grows by 12% per year. Let's consider the same table again, in which the first year you retained an amount of 2,40,000 rupees. If you invest this 2,40,000 rupees at an interest rate of 12% per annum, then this 2,40,000 in 20 years will become 20,67,000 rupees. Now, if you consider the second year, you had a cash retained of 2,71,000 rupees, which if you invest in the same option for 12% increase per year, you will have a cash retained of 20,85,000 rupees for the next 19 years of your accumulation. As you can see on the table, this goes on and at the 20th year, your cash retained is 21,15,000 rupees. Since for this calculation, we are only taking a time to 20 years, it will stay as it is in the next column. So your total cash after 20 years of investing is going to be 4 crores 27 lakhs approximately. So it's very evident that if you invest your surplus plus cash into some investment option, your cash balance would have increased significantly. If you had not invested your surplus cash, you would have a total balance of 1.7 crores. But if you did invest, you will have a surplus of 4.26 crores. This helps to put you in a very good position in your post-retirement life as well. Other reasons to actually invest is because it will fight inflation. The second reason is to create wealth on the side. Once you invest in a particular option, it will grow on its own. You do not have to worry about it. It's a secondary source of income for you. Now, the next question that comes to our head is where to invest? When it comes to investing, one has to choose an asset class according to their risk and reward appetite. The most popular asset classes are 1. Fixed income instruments 2. Equities 3. Real estate and the fourth, Commodities Let's talk about the first one, fixed income instruments. These instruments have very limited risk to it and you get fixed return from the investment. Typical fixed income investments are 1. Fixed deposits by banks 2. Bonds issued by the government of India 3. Bonds issued by government related agencies like National Highway Authority etc. 
and 4. Bonds issued by corporates. The typical return from fixed instruments are usually between 7% and 11% per year. Investing in equities involves buying of shares in publicly listed companies. Yes, I am talking about the share market here. The shares are traded both on the Bombay Stock Exchange, which is BSE, and the National Stock Exchange, which is NSE. Unlike the fixed income instrument, there is no capital guarantee for this. However, the trade-off is that the gains that you get from this particular instrument is way much higher than the fixed income. Indian equities have generated more than 14% growth rate over the past 15 years. Investing in some of the best companies in India has given a return of more than 20% growth rate per annum in the long term. The third instrument is real estate. Real estate, as you may already be aware of, is basically buying and selling of commercial as well as non-commercial land. Typical examples include transacting in sites, apartments, buildings, etc. There are two major sources of income for real estate. One is the rental income and the second is the capital appreciation of the investment. As you may be already be aware, the gains in real estate is a lot, but the only problem is the capital required for real estate is very high. The fourth aspect is commodities. Commodities mainly involves trading of precious metals like gold and silver. Investments in these particular precious metals have given a yield of more than 8% per year over the past decade. Now let's go back to the initial examples of the savings that we have. Now in this case, if we were investing in fixed income instruments with say 9% per annum return, then our savings would have grown to rupees 3.3 crores. In the second case, if we were investing in equities and let's say it was giving a yield of 15% per annum, then our savings would have grown up to rupees 5.4 crores. Now, if we were investing in commodities in precious metals and it was growing at a rate of 8% per annum, then we would have received around 3.10 crores. Now, clearly, equities tend to give you the best results for a multi-year perspective. But do not ever put all the eggs in one basket. Your investment should be a mix of asset classes, not just one asset class. The technique of allocating your money across different asset classes is called asset allocation. A young professional may take a higher amount of risk because of his age and years of investment left for him. Typically, a young investor should allocate 70% of his savings into equities, 20% into precious metals and the rest in fixed income investments. On the other side of it, for a retired professional who cannot take risk anymore, he should invest 80% into fixed income, 10% into equities and 10% into precious metals. The ratio in which one should allocate your investment completely depends on your risk appetite. One of the key things that you have to understand is that risk and reward go hand in hand. The higher the risk, higher will be the return. The lower the risk, the lower the return. I would say that investment in equities is a great option because investment in equities has been known to beat inflation over long periods of time. For example, for a fixed deposit, if you're getting an interest of 6% and if the inflation at that point of time is 7%, it means that you're losing a net of 1% per annum. So fixed income instruments are usually for ultra risk averse investors. The problem with real estate is that it requires a large amount of capital and at the same time you will always have to wait for the right time to get the right buyer at the right price you want. In a nutshell, invest to secure your future and choose an instrument which best suits your risk and reward appetite. If you like the content that we provide, please make sure you give us a like on our video and subscribe to our channel so that you will be notified of all the upcoming videos from our end to give you more information about the financial world. Thank you for watching.